Hello friends. For today's video, I'm going to be doing the unpopular opinions book tag. So recently I did what I'm calling somewhat unpopular opinions. I did a video where I talked about books that in the circles that I'm involved in, it seems like everybody loves them, gushes about them, but I thought they were just okay. So they're not completely unpopular opinions because I didn't hate these books and everybody else loves them. It was just kind of like, I didn't love them as much as you. And then I did the reverse of that, still somewhat unpopular because I still was sort of in the middle, but they were books that it seems like everybody really hates or things are trash. And I'm like, I mean, I thought they were all right. And so today I am committing to actual unpopular opinions via the unpopular opinions book tag. So I'm gonna jump into it. The first question is a popular book or series that you didn't like. Um. I don't think it's a secret that I'm confused about Fourth Wing's hype. I didn't hate Fourth Wing. I'm just like, I just don't understand what what is going on. Uh, but you all know that. Um, I guess you all might know this next one too, because when I read it, I was like, ah, how dare you? I loved this series and now I don't. And that would be The Live Ship Traders by Robin Hobb. Oh, I loved Ship of Magic. I loved Ship of Magic. It was, I'm not usually one to give star ratings, but I, uh, Buddy read this with a few other booktubers. Uh, Aaron was the one that hosted the read along for it, Aaron from Booked and Busy. And when we did one of the, the live shows, she asked, what would your star rating be? And I was like, easy five stars. I was like, it's just so perfect. I loved it. I loved the character work. I loved the pacing, even though I feel like it's not really known for being action-packed or being quick. It's not like there's a ton always happening necessarily, but it was always intriguing to me. And so in my mind, that equates to good pacing because I always want to con continue on. And so I really, really loved basically everything about Live Ship. I liked the world. I thought that the difference between how she wrote Farseer versus how she, she wrote Live Ship was really impressive because they do feel quite different. So I was all about it. Second one, I was kind of in the middle. I was like, eh, there's some moments here that I was not a fan of. There's some criticisms, but ultimately, I, you know, it's the middle book in a series. Maybe it just has middle book syndrome. And then I read the third book and I was like, how dare you waste my time? I was so angry. I was, I, I, and I kept telling, I kept asking myself like, okay, a lot of the things that happen in this book are meant to be rage inducing. A lot of them are meant to show how horrible certain things are. So this feeling that I have is it a result of really fantastic writing that is just evoking all of these emotions in me, or am I legitimately mad at the book because I don't like how they tackle these difficult topics? And it was kind of more of that. And I still, I say every single time that I still, one, respect the, what I felt and my interpretation of the themes that Robin Hobb was executing. It was just the, how she executed them was the part that I didn't really like. And so I think that that is really difficult to do. I will always, always, always give my respect to authors who make those attempts, because it's hard. You could just write fourth wing, right? <laughs> you can just go for fourth wing and just be fun and have like cool dragons and a lot of angst. You could, you could just do that. So it's more of just the, the actual execution I didn't like, but everybody's different. <laughs> Everybody feels differently. And then one last one that I never really touched on too much because it was a DNF, but the book One Dark Window, I picked this one up uh, before it seemed to be getting a fair amount of love. And I DNF'd it because I thought it was kind of very edgy and angsty and I just didn't care to continue. And I, I kept seeing at my local bookstore, it was a recommendation from one of the staff and I would see people talking about it on Instagram and the average rating I think is pretty high. And I was like, oh really? I'm glad everybody liked it, I guess. Next question. Uh, a popular book or series that everyone else seems to hate, but you love. Uh, the two recent new releases from this year that I've read that don't seem to be getting universal praise would be City of Nightmares and Last Tale of the Flower Bride. Both of these. Uh, City of Nightmares is just weird, but I thought it was super funny. 
And Last Sail of the Flower Bride is abstract and very, very purple and quite dark. It's quite morbid because it's sort of in the vein of a grim fairy tale, but actually being like, no, but look though, when these horrific things happen in these grim fairy tales, look at what happens as a result. And so it's uncomfortable, but it's told in such a flowery way that it shouldn't have been, no pun intended, it shouldn't have been my cup of tea, but I did like it. It does not seem to be something a lot of people are loving though. So those two, I would say. Um, and then one that is not hated by any means, but I just want to shout it out because I think it's great and I do love it and I want more people to read it, would be Engines of Empire and its sequel, Engines of Chaos. They are so good. <laughs> one of my friends just started it and uh, they've been messaging me and I was like, yay, someone I can talk to about this series. It's so good. The next question, question three, says a love triangle where the main character ended up with the person you did not want them to end up with, warn people for spoilers or an OTP that you don't like. I don't know why saying OTP. I do know why, because it ends with TP. I just think toilet paper. <laughs> I know it's one true pairing, but I just hear TP and then, anyway. So, um, I guess in the second season of Shadow and Bone, I'm not gonna go into spoilers. I did over on my side channel, Full Meta Analysis, I did do a non-spoiler, a uh, review for the second season. I also did a predictions video and then I also did a spoiler discussion with some of my friends. So if you're interested in seeing my thoughts, it's over on that channel. But keeping a non-spoiler here, in season two, there is sort of a change of things where I'm like, what? I wanted this to happen. Why isn't this happening? And then there are two characters that everybody ships, that everybody loves. And this show was kind of like, but what if one of the characters kind of made flirty eyes at another character at the end of the season? And I'm like, no, what are you doing? What are you doing? So I actually quite liked, it's a little, it's a little cheesy. It's a little CW, uh, Shadow and Bone as a whole. I've liked it because I think it's fitting to the tone of the books, but um, I, I was enjoying most of the season. And then some of those moments at the end, I was like, ah, that's not what I want. <laughs> uh, but I'm still gonna watch season three when it comes out. Question four, a popular book genre that you hardly reach for. I'm gonna tweak this to say a popular subgenre uh, because I primarily read fantasy and I will dip my toes in other things. But the problem is I could just answer any other genre that isn't fantasy. So I'm going to specifically say a subgenre of fantasy and that'd be grimdark. Aside from Joe Abercrombie, and if you consider it grimdark, uh, I suppose Sapkowski's Witcher series. Um, I'm not really a grimdark person. I, I think grimdark sometimes is, it, it goes from zeroing in on the bleakness of life and then it, go, it goes from that and the sort of lack of power that we often have, the way that we can't really do anything to change the world for the better, you know, like all those feelings. Uh, sometimes it does that and does it really well. That's what I think Abercrombie does well. It goes from that to just, let's just be disgusting and think of the most horrific things and have that happen. And I'm like, I don't want to read that. I, that's not interesting to me. And I suppose you, can, you, you obviously can have commentary within horrific stories or situations in various different narratives and stories. But I just don't, I don't know. I think sometimes it, it really does come down to but I can be even darker and I'm like, okay, cool. I don't care. <laughs> uh, question five. I feel like this is the most controversial one. Although a lot of you already know my answer. Popular or beloved character that you do not like? Adolin. That's probably been my answer before, but I don't care. <laughs> Adolin. I, I'm rereading Stormlight right now and I'm like still confused because there's a part of me that's like, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> Because sometimes when enough people on the internet tell you you're wrong, aggressively and angrily, like, no, Adolin's the best, uh, then you're like, maybe he is great. I just don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so when I went back to reread it, I'm like, I'll have an open mind. Maybe I'll like the guy a lot more on reread. No, I don't. In fact, I find him even more annoying. But maybe as I keep going, I'll come around to him. We'll see. Question six, an author that you just can't seem to get into. Um, Hob, I guess, because I tried the first two Farseer books, I DNF'd the third one, I read the three books in Liveship, 
and I was angry by the end. And I've heard not the best thing about Rainwild, so I'm like, I don't really care. I don't want to read any more Fitz. I know some people love Fitz. I've seen people before be like, I better not hear any hate toward Fitz. Not at me, I just, in general, in a playful, fun way. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't stand him. So, Hob, I just, I don't know what it is. I, I just don't seem to connect with, well, that's not true because there was in Ship of Magic, I did. But I think it's how she resolves things or doesn't resolve things and how, like I said before, the execution of some of her themes and oddly kind of what I was talking about with Grimdark, it's not that she's disgusting by any, well, she writes things that are horrific, but they're things that actually happen. It doesn't feel like she's trying to invent horrific things. But where I'm going with all this is people talk about like, oh, her books are just so depressing. They're so sad. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, a little, a little too much though. I, I mean, can you... I don't want to give away spoilers. I know what happens at the end of Farseer, and I know obviously what happens at the end of Live Ship. And sometimes I'm like, did you really need to? It just feels like rubbing salt in the wound. Like, did. I'm going to try to be really vague here, but like, did the ship need to have the eyes of the person that did horrible things to, you know, you know, if you've read it, you know. I'm like, did they need their eyes, really? The ship that this person's going to be on for the rest of their life, basically. Did they need to always, every single time, look at the eyes of the ship? And be like, yeah, those are the eyes that I saw during horrible things. Like, really? We need that? No, we don't. <laughs> so, anyway, moving to question seven. A popular book trope that you're tired of seeing. I mean, we're all tired of Faye at this point, right? Um, this this other thing I'll talk about, I don't really know what to call this trope, if it, if it has a name. But I have noticed in a lot of stories, there seems to be this... This is a delicate topic, and I think a lot of stories, I'm glad that they're writing it. It's just that how they're writing it. So I'll backtrack for a second, and I'll actually say what the thing is first. So there's a tendency to write, usually it's a female character who has gone through something, some form of manipulation to think less of themselves or think that they need another person, and it's usually a man, uh, that they need that person. And... It's not until outside perspectives start kind of looking at the situation and they see it for what it is before that the female character starts to recognize what's going on. And that's a very realistic thing, not just with those particular uh, genders in those roles. It can happen between any people. It can happen between friends. It can happen between people that are in a relationship. It can happen between parents and their children. It can happen between a lot of different individual siblings. Uh, but... I usually see it in that framework, and it's the fact that a lot of times writers, I appreciate that they're trying to write that, but they write it in a way where it's not actually showing the way that the manipulation affects a person, and it's not really showing the subtleties and the little things. It, that takes time to develop, and it takes time to show that in a way that is true to that experience. And I think a lot of authors are trying to write that, but they're trying to write it within a compelling, fun, adventurous story. And so it doesn't get the screen time that I think it needs to actually do it justice. But uh, I, it's, not that I don't, I'm, it's not that I'm tired of it. I want it to be written more because I really want for people that have experienced that to feel that that cathartic feeling of actually seeing someone go through something that they're like, that, this is me. I went through this and this is exactly what it was like. I want people to be able to have that. Or if you haven't had that experience, but then you read it in a book, then it might open your eyes to what that's like for people. So I want that to exist. I just don't want it to be done in a way that it doesn't seem like it gets enough time. Anyway, question eight, uh, a popular series that you have no interest in reading. Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. Is that the name of the series? That's the name of the book, I think. But you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just don't really care about that. I've tried Throne of Glass. I've tried Akatar, And I just don't know if Sarah J. Mass is for me. But she's for plenty of other people. So that's great for them. Uh, last question. The saying goes, the book is always better than the movie. But what movie or TV show adaptation do you prefer more than the book? Dune? Witcher 3? I definitely answered Witcher at some point. The Witcher 3 video game is the best version of Witcher, in my opinion. The Dune book, while, influ uh, while it has definitely influenced a lot of the things that we see now, it's influenced fantasy and science fiction. Um, 
I just wasn't, I, I didn't really care for the book that much. And I think that the movie took what is there and then it fleshed it out and it, it definitely made it more compelling in my opinion. And then I did really like the first season of Shadow and Bone. I said before I liked most of season two and then the end, I'm like, what are we doing? So I'll be curious to see what season three does. Um, but the first season specifically, I definitely thought was much, it was strong. I don't want to say it was much better than the books because I actually like the books, uh, but I did think it was an improvement from the books. That is it for the unpopular opinions book tag. I would love to know. Well, actually, I, I want to say really quick for that last question, is that that unpopular? I feel like my answers are actually shared by a lot of people. So that last question doesn't feel like I'm saying anything. I just feel like I'm saying things a lot of people would agree with. But for a lot of the rest of it, maybe I upset some people. I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to let me know. What are your unpopular opinions? What would your answers to these be? Where do you feel totally different about a lot of these? Where do you feel similarly? But anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in the other two videos I mentioned, my somewhat unpopular opinions, I'll have that linked. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.